Hi viewers, thank you for tuning in today's Pocket Webinar. I am Carla Nise of the Rotary Club of New Manila East, and I'm your host for today's episode of DefendCov.org, where we help you cope up with COVID-19. Today, we're going to talk about a very interesting and timely topic. We're going to talk about vaccination. The light at the end of the tunnel is near. And here with us to talk about the Philippine Vaccination Program is a doctor of medicine, an associate professor of the Department of Surgery, the UP College of Medicine, an attending pediatric surgeon of the Department of Surgery, the Philippine General Hospital, and she's also the training officer of the Division of Pediatric Surgery, the Philippine General Hospital. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Esther Sagil. JP asked me to talk about something about COVID, and I felt that it's, um, I think it's already in the news, that it's the vaccination now that we are really dealing with. So if you allow me to share my screen, okay, I entitled, I made the title to jab or not to jab. This is the dilemma of the COVID vaccine. Yun dapat na no-brainer, hindi Jump eh, no? no? Dapat hindi eh, no? Pero may dilemma and we're seeing a lot of pros and cons when it comes to getting the vaccine. So we felt that we have to be part of the information campaign to make sure that this is a successful venture and it, we start getting back to our better normal. No? Ang dami nang nag-suffer because of this pandemic. So for my disclosures, disclaimers, and acknowledgements, all of the data that we're getting is still evolving. What was true in January is not anymore true ngayon February. And by next week, meron na naman bago yan. But most of the data here are the, the data I present are the current ones. Tapos, uh, I credit the number, numerous Zoom webinars I've been attending, as well as my relationship with a lot of colleagues who gave me so much information. And lastly, Dr. Regina Burbo is the HECO chief of PGH. Uh, she de delivered a lecture last Friday on who should not get the vaccine, and I include that here. So just to put everything in perspective, as of today, the global um, caseload of COVID is already in the 100 millions, 106 million to be exact, and the death toll is already 2.3 million. 2.3 million people already died because of COVID. U.S. tops the list at almost half a million people dying, but U.K. is not far behind when you talk per capita. In the Philippines, we're not so bad if we compare ourselves with our, West, our Western neighbors, but if we compare ourselves with our Asian neighbors, we are measured on the losing end. Our deaths number 11,000 already. Uh, since, Feb, since January, ang average deaths natin is in the 50 na per day. That's a uh, low, kasi noong initially, nasa 100 to 150 tayo per day. So our caseload now is in the at least a half a million na. Okay? And of course, Metro Manila tops the list. I know that Batasan Hills, Barangay di Bagong Diwa, are those that are often in the red spots of Quezon City. Okay? Ang Quezon City ang pinakamataas. Eh. Kasi my brother lives in the Batasan Hills area at lagi silang nalalockdown. So because of this pandemic, do we really need these vaccines? Well, alam naman natin lahat, GCK pa rin tayo, so we do continue. We are still in the middle of a pandemic and the Philippines is one of those countries with the worst, most stringent protocols. Grabe tayo, hindi lang tayo mask. Mandatory na mask, mandatory pa face shield. We have social distancing, we have hand washing, we stopped education virtually for until postgraduate. In fact, it is only this February that we're slowly starting face-to-face -face, uh, classes, and that's only for the health-associated professions. So regular college, hindi pa rin pwede. But really, the best way to stop COVID, apart from this minimal health protocols, is to build enough immunity. And unfortunately, there has never been a virus you know, that has eliminated itself by inducing natural immunity. In other words, lahat na infect, para lahat immune na. Herd immunity or the immunity of the most people, usually that means 70%, is induced by vaccination as demonstrated by smallpox. Last February, too, that's just a week ago, the USD came out with this study. 
about worries about COVID-19 vaccine. Just, so just to put everything into perspective, remember President Duterte was talking about the China vaccine and Russia. I'm in talk with China and with Russia, and they're going to give us free vaccine. And there was a lot of um, anxiety about this, even amongst doctors. In fact, when they said, sign na ba ka ibibigay? Wala pang 40% yung po pa pa vaccinate. But this is a very significant survey, and this was throughout the Philippines from all 17 regions. It had 11, 000, uh, 15,000 participants. So the questions are, if available na yung vaccine, would you use it? Half and half. What is your confidence? If the, virus, if the vaccine comes from China or Russia, look at the confidence levels. Pero pag Western, 75.3%. So you don't really know where it's coming from. Is it a natural distrust for communist countries? Is it a distrust for something made in China, uh, brought about by media preference also? But finally, in the, in the bottom part, you can see there that I prefer a vaccine made in the USA or Europe is 45.7, no? but I prefer a vaccine in China or Russia is only 1% or 2%, so a total of 3.3%. So I saw this personally because in PGH, when we're say, thinking that Sinovac was going to be the vaccine that would be rolled out first, less than 40% signed up. But when we found out, because the government said that it was going to be Pfizer that was going to come out, biglang nagi 74% ang pumayag. So you know that vaccine con confidence is also tied up with a uh, country of origin. But the latest, and I think you know also that Secretary Roca said this, that don't look at the vaccine brands. In fact, uh, Sinovac is getting a lot of flack. But technically, the technology, the science behind the Chinese vaccines is actually the oldest one in the book. The use of attenuated or inactivated vaccines. That's also like polio, measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines. So, so far, how, what do the data show? This is last uh, two weeks ago data. In the Philippines, there is no FDA-approved vaccine yet. The only two vaccines in the Philippines that have been approved for emergency use utilization uh, authorization, that's EUA, are Pfizer and Astra. Okay. So these are now the current vaccines that are in the works. Only Pfizer and Astra are under EUA in the Philippines. Sinovac has already uh, applied, but hindi pa siya nabibigyan. And look at the um, percentages of preventing symptomatic clinical disease. Because we all know, for those of you who have received pneumococcal vaccines, who have received flu vaccines, we, some of us still develop flu-like symptoms or pneumococcal-like symptoms even after vaccination. So really, it is not just really 100% to prevent infection, but rather to prevent symptomatic or severe disease. So as far as that is concerned, all of them can prevent symptomatic clinical disease. But so far, Astra has been in the low halves, 62 to 90%. Sinovac, 50. Yan yung pinag-aawayan yung Sinovac. When people see the 50%, ayaw. But actually, from the epidemiologic point of view, 50% is already enough. For reference, the regular flu vaccine that you get, the Fluorix, that's only 40% uh, effective in preventing symptomatic disease. But for preventing severe disease and death, most all are almost 100%. 100%. Now, another bone of contention is the number of doses. Because it is posing a problem now in the US. Binibigan nila lahat ng bakuna, wala pa palang available ng pang second dose, which has to be given in 28 days. So tayo, ang ginawa, talaga yung dumating, dadating na 117,000 the doses, that is for 58,500 persons. Kasi two doses ang Pfizer in. J&J is the only vaccine that has only one dose. But unfortunately, J&J still has, nakapag-apply na sila sa US, but they expect to get their EUA in the US by next week. And it's only after that that they will start filing here in the Philippines. Okay. So, pagdating sa which one will come first, syempre, yung may EUA muna. But remember, EUA means that it is still technically a trial. Nasa mas malaking trial lang tayo. It has been tried on more than 10,000 people already, but they want it in a wider, um, in a, with a wider um, a number of people. Because we are in a pandemic, we don't want people dying anymore. 
So let's now go to the cost. Because if you notice, most of the LGUs, local government units, have actually procured AstraZeneca. And that's because of the cold chain technology needed for the mRNA by, uh, vaccines. That's Pfizer and Moderna. Pfizer needs a minus 80 degree no? uh, temperature. Moderna, minus 20. So, konti lang sa atin na merong ganun. At saka nakakatakot, di ba summer pa naman? Hindi mo alam kung magiging important pa yung vaccine if it's exposed to uh, warmer temperatures than what is required. In contrast, the rest of the other vaccines are in the working range, temperature range of 2 to 8, yung normal natin na ref lang. Kaya most of the LGUs, knowing their capacities and capabilities, also are uh, more in favor of the vaccines that are not requiring too, too much cold. And that's, for one, is AstraZeneca. More than that, look at the price of Astra. The price of Astra, this is global, and this was uh, January data, is only $4. While the price of Moderna is $37. So naintindihan natin din, no, bakit LGUs are veering towards Astra. The problem is, just two days ago, the data came out in South Africa that the Astra vaccine appears not to be able to prevent uh, the South African strain. So that's a game changer because they stopped giving the Astra vaccine in South Africa. So we don't have the South African uh, strain here. What we have still is the UK strain. So it still remains to be seen if this same scenario of people not responding, uh, having vaccination but still developing COVID because they get South African strain is still there. It can still happen. Ang sabi nila, the mRNA virus uh, vaccines the Moderna and Pfizer are easier to manipulate, no? to become responsive or to, to prom give antibodies also to the South African vaccine. So we will be knowing, uh, knowing more about that in the next few weeks. But overall, no, knowing this, the vaccine should be safe and effective for most of us. Unfortunately, there are populations who should not be uh, given the vaccine. It may be because there are contraindications. Two, there is lack of uh, sufficient data to say that the vaccine is safe. No, effective naman yung vaccine, eh, but is it safe for some people? And of course, the issue of vaccine supply. Again, for the record, the government is procuring more vaccine. The vaccines that we are procuring is actually so much more than the population of the Philippines. They're procuring for almost 150 million people. Eh, ang population ng Pilipinas is only 109 million. And we're not including children, which is roughly about 25% of the population. So sobra-sobra ang pinoprocure natin. Tapos multiple efforts pa, may public sector and private sector. So it will not be an issue of vaccine supply. It's an issue of timing when the vaccine is going to come. No? As I said earlier, una lang yung COVID hospitals. But eventually, you will see also the prioritization and giving of the vaccines. Which is this, I got this from yesterday's news. No? I attended a COVID vaccination program uh, two weeks ago. And nung panahon na yon, ang apat is frontline health workers, that's doctors, nurses, even the admin staff of hospitals. Ang second is the senior citizens, so that's 60 years old and above. Okay? Pero ang pangatlo two, years, two weeks ago was indigents. Pinalitan na nila, na-realize nila na ang mas kailangan ng vaccine are those with comorbidities. And what comorbidities are very important? yung mga may cardiac, ang top two comorbidities that are associated with death or severe disease in COVID is DM, diabetes, and heart disease, hypertension. Okay? So kaya yan naging number three. And of course, yung number four natin, those essential workers, our grocery people, gasoline boys, and of course, our uniform personnel, ang taas ng ating incidence of um, COVID in our, amongst our police and army. Nagbago pa to ha, yung number two senior citizens. But yesterday, Secretary Duque gave a cautionary line because of what's happen what happened in Norway where the very frail um, senior citizens who received the vaccines, no, merong mga deaths. Okay. So ngayon meron na siyang cautionary line na baka yung very frail elderly should not receive the vaccines at this time, particularly the Pfizer vaccine. Really, who should not be given vaccine? Currently, it's allergy. Allergy to any of the previous dose of COVID-19. Remember, it's two doses. So if you develop an allergy to your first dose, definitely you should not get your second dose. 
no wag na kasi ganun ang allergy first attack is mild the second attack is going to be worse so kung yung first attack mo nagkaroon ka lang ng pantal-pantal your second attack it might be worse baka hindi ka makahinga that's what's important and in fact our Philippine Society of Allergy Asthma and Immunology came out with position statements with regards who should be uh really uh, getting the vaccine and should be cautioned against getting the vaccine so if you have allergies to food or medication, can you get the vaccine? If you have had urticaria, urticaria is yung nagpapantal-pantal. Angie edema is namamaga yung muka, including the eyes. Or if you've had any respiratory symptoms, difficulty of breathing after an allergy, no? dapat ka ma-evaluate because you might have some allergies also to PEG, that's polyethylene glycol, or polysorbates. These are the incipients of the vaccines, of the mRNA vaccines, that's Moderna and um, Pfizer. So kung meron ka kasing allergy yan, don't be vaccinated. And for any of those na merong allergies, we ask that they be um, observed for at least 60 minutes after vaccination. So lahat ngayon ng vaccination centers magkakaroon ng waiting area, observation area. We're, we're also told that we should have an e-card that's called an emergency card, EpiPen if you have it, but just plain epinephrine is very important. So just in case may allergy, Dapat epinephrine should be around. Side effects are common with vaccination. For those of you who have received uh, flu vax or pneumococcal vaccine, usually lamamaga, di ba? Or medyo may konting lagnat ka. But that's transitory. Usually, it's because of vaccine reactogenicity ang tawag namin doon. No? So, there are people who should not get vaccinated. Number one is pediatric patients, younger than 60. Why? Because all the trials were in adults. And usually because of the Geneva, because of ethics, we do not give vaccines or any, we do not do any trials on children first. Adults muna. That is what will happen with the induction. Now, una yung bata. Okay? So anyone with a previous severe or immediate allergic reaction should not get the vaccine. Or if you're already having symptoms of COVID, ang sabi nila ngayon is if you've had, you are currently experiencing symptoms of COVID, don't be vaccinated. Who can receive the vaccine? If you had COVID last month, you shouldn't get vaccinated now. Kasi you have antibodies pa naman eh. But if your COVID infection was six months ago, so the latest is August, then yes, you should get vaccinated again. Those who are iffy, it needs to have the a consult or a consultation with their healthcare provider is those with severe allergic reactions to any other vaccine. Pregnant women, there are not. We don't really recommend a pregnant women to develop to get vaccination unless there are specific indications. Those with immune compromising conditions like yung mga steroids, like chemo, no? breastfeeding women, and people in anticoagulants. For those with um, those who are special, we call them the special uh, groups. They follow special procedures there, so they should remain in the location of the vaccination for 30 to 60 minutes. So, binigyan namin sila ng vaccine, but babantayan namin sila. Or those who recently had COVID and were treated with antibody-based therapies, they should wait at least three months after treatment to be vaccinated. Okay? So, for those who received another vaccine, so, eto caveat lang to, kasi di ba sometimes you get a flu vaccine and then a pneumococcal vaccine, dapat 14 days, two weeks in between to allow you to develop, to recover and develop your antibodies before you get another vaccine. So the final method and the bottom line silly is it's a pandemic. It has been, it has had grave consequences in the medical field, in the business arena. And it's a global crisis that has caused uh, really socioeconomic impacts. I cannot tell you the, I can tell you several horror stories about suicides, major depression because of this pandemic. Okay, so, ang severe disease natin is just medical disease. It has also caused psychological disease and death. And we now have vaccines, two at this time, which are already have EUA approval. And they have been evaluated by our experts. They are safe and effective for COVID-19. So, we want to be vaccinated to protect us from being ill, from giving others our illnesses. And the reason why healthcare professionals are the first in line is because Healthcare professionals are the ones in first line in taking care of COVID patients and limited supply ang healthcare professionals natin. So pag nagkamatayan ng healthcare professionals natin, mawawalan tayo na mag-aalaga sa atin. 
The next uh, line is the vulnerable populations, such as the older people and our people with long-term diseases. We think we don't have a lot of long-term uh, nursing facilities because you know, the epicenters in New York and in the UK. So while there are some, there is, and I think we all agree, there is still some uncertainty and incomplete data, no? and there is still some debate, some disparities in the populations. For most of the population studied in all of the trials, the desirable effects of the COVID-19 vaccine far outweigh the undesirable effects. Okay? And for special populations, most may still receive the vaccines, except with specific contraindications. But again, these vaccines alone will not uh, end the pandemic. Hindi ibig sabihin, pag nabakunahan na tayo, magwawala na rin tayo. We need to remain uh, vigilant and still adhere to the basic uh, healthcare uh, preventative measures that still physical distancing, wearing of masks, hand hygiene. So I've always said, because I'm also with infection control, that if there's anything that, to look good, uh, that looks good here with the COVID vaccine, it's people became aware that they have to be clean. Okay? Bumaba ang aking surgical infections, bumaba ang aming pneumonia, and other healthcare-related infections, non-COVID, because of this minimum health protocols. So the bottom line, are the COVID-19 vaccines really necessary? And the answer definitely is a resounding yes, because it offers one of the tried and tested ways that we may be able to finally end this pandemic. I think that's my last slide. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Sagil, for that enlightening discussion about the Philippine vaccination program. I'm sure a lot of the questions in our viewers' minds were answered by the lively discussion we had a while ago. And viewers, if you have any thoughts, comments, and suggestions, your misgivings, pros and cons of vaccination, please comment below and press the like button if you enjoyed watching this video. This is Carla Nise of DefendCom.org and the Rotary Club of New Manila East signing out. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong. Good day.